Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Now, all week we've been talking about the, the how to conduct yourself or how to behave yourself in the house of God. Praise God. So, he, he's dealing with the pastor first. That's what we're dealing with because the pastor is like the, the, the example of the church. See, because most likely, everyone in that um, church group, church setting, or that environment, see, will naturally, over time, if that pastor stays long enough, over time, everyone will... Well, somehow, it's just natural with human beings. Pattern their lifestyle according to that pastor. See? It's just natural. Not, not because that's the perfect thing. Because the truth is the Holy Spirit is the real pastor of every one of us. That's why John tells us that we don't need any man to teach us. So, most, mostly, the pastor is a teacher of babes. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you know, sometimes you find people who say, because I'm, I'm sitting in the authority of a pastor, so I carry all the authority. So even when people are more mature than him spiritually, he doesn't want to listen to them. Now, now that's, that's someone who's going somewhere to happen negatively. See? Because the, the fact that someone decides to be a pastor doesn't necessarily mean he becomes the spiritual head. In other words, he knows more than every other person. No one... Someone, you can be a pastor of a church and yet someone else in that church has more spiritual authority than you. Yeah, that's the truth. See, he commands more in the realm of the spirit than you are. But he didn't desire to be the pastor. So it doesn't mean because you're the pastor, everyone must do what you say. No, there are people in that congregation that might just be more knowledgeable than you in the things of the spirit. It doesn't mean they are lower than you. So one of the things that's why, you know, that's why he, look at what he says here. He said from verse 3 now, you know, we've talked about he must be blameless, he must be husband of a wife, he must be sober-minded, you know. Now he says, yeah, he says he must be teachable. Verse 3 says, not giving to wine. A pastor shouldn't be giving to wine. Now, before he became a pastor, he must have grown to that point where wine is not his thing. See? Now then, he says, not violent, not a violent man. Not greedy for money. He's content. See? He says, but gentle, not quarrelsome. Not covetous. Not one who's trying to grab something. One who rules his own house well. Having his own children in submission with all reverence. See? He says, for if a man does not know how to rule his own house. How will he take care of the church of God? Now look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, he must not be a novice. Did you get that? So it's not a newcomer. No one who joined last week. No one who joined last week. May he not even, may even be not, not or may not even be one who joined last year. You must be sure he's not a novice. Now look at, look at, look at what he says. He says, not a novice. Why? He says, lest... Being puffed up with pride, he falls into the same condemnation as the devil. Oh, oh. If he's a novice, meaning he doesn't know much. What know much? You see, he may know scriptures, but it doesn't mean he knows much. You see, he's talking about one who's got understanding. You see, through dealing with issues. Not as his faith must have been working. He must have been putting his faith to work because that's the only way you learn. He must be patient. He's, he's tested. He's seen things. He's understood things now. So he knows how the spirit operates. Now he then he says, if he's a novice, what, what's going to happen to him? He's going to be puffed up with pride and then he will fall into the same condemnation of the devil when he begins to feel he knows better than everybody else. He's going to fall into the same kind of condemnation that Lucifer fell into. Pride stirred up in him and he felt he was wiser than God. And then that was his downfall. That's what happens to a pastor who allows pride to pop, prop up in his heart and he doesn't deal with it. Now pride came because he was a novice. He hasn't understood yet that it is God that honors So you, you, you find a pastor that says, nobody can ride me in this church. Nobody can. Huh? You're called to serve. So you know that you can be great and yet be serving. Because he understands that it is God who gives honor. So someone may insult you today, it doesn't matter. <laughs> because tomorrow, the person is going to see in your glory. And it still doesn't matter. 
Watch this. Verse 7. Let me just conclude with, with this today. Moreover, he must have a great testimony among those who are outside. Lest he falls into reproach and the snare of the devil. So, people outside the church, non-Christians, he says he must have a good testimony from them. In other words, your pastor, you shouldn't go outside and hear that. <laughs> That your pastor, that guy, man, I know where we they meet. Huh? My pastor? Uh, 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 uh. That's, that shouldn't be your pastor. You get what I'm saying? You should be able to meet someone outside. He said, said oh, no, you know, that's my pastor. Are you sure? Is that my pastor? He said, yes. Wow, no wonder. No wonder. I said, what happened? Do you know I met him two weeks ago at Susu Place? I was, you know, stuck. He helped me to do something and then he just did it and he left. Just, I even tried to appreciate, say, no, 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 no. He left. So that man is a pastor. So yeah, he's my pastor. Oh, wow. He's a good man. That, that's the testimony unbelievers, those outside the church, should have about your pastor. Now, like I said, if this is not the testimony of your pastor, hmm, how did he become your pastor in the first place? You must check out these things. And these are serious issues. I'm going to continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.